Hello, this is Vern, and today I'm going to show you four specific boundaries you can set that will simultaneously increase your self-worth, attract extraordinary men, and push away, repel, and kick to the curb men who would otherwise waste your time. Hello, this is Vern. Welcome to another edition of VernMendez.com. If you'd like to learn how you can attract your ideal life partner without the need for gimmicks, manipulation, or silly techniques, Make sure to hit the subscribe button right now so you can be notified of new episodes as they come out. There's a big problem in teaching someone how to set boundaries and here's why. Because if you have zero attachment to someone, if you don't have a high degree of this guy really matters to me, then setting a boundary becomes relatively simple. However, if for some reason you or your nervous system feels like that is an amazing guy, if you feel seen, heard, if you feel like the guy is special, has a very different type of connection with you, if you feel a lot of intensity towards him, then setting that boundary is exponentially harder. So what I want to do today is instead of just saying, here's the four boundaries, go set them, is here's what you need to do to be able to set them consistently and then I'll share with you what the boundaries are. I'd love for you to think about boundaries not as a thing you do, but as the natural extension of a way of being that creates a better life for you and also an invitation for a guy to show up in a way that's more worthy, that's more respectful, that's more pursuant for you. Because if you think of a boundary as something you have to do to get the guy, that becomes a little harder than if this is the way you are, this is the level of self-love you have for yourself and you're simply extending that level of self-love and appreciation and worthiness that you have for yourself to another human being. I'm gonna share with you four specific mindsets that allow you to be able to set boundaries consistently. Without this, I think it's gonna be a lot harder. The first one is my past does not define my future. Here's why this is important, because if you have a fundamental thought that you have not been able to create the relationship you want with someone, that men are not uh, what you're looking for, that guys don't respect you and love you, if you think that things will continue being the same way in the future, then the risk of setting that boundary is too high. If you know that one simple thing you do could be the detonant to you experiencing something exponentially different, then you might be far more willing to set those boundaries, even though there's a risk that by setting the boundary, the guy might decide to step out of the situation or not continue connecting with you. Now, the second one, the second belief is I control the meaning. I control the meaning means that in any given situation, you don't have control of how a guy shows up, of the number of great guys versus not great guys in the world, of the way online dating apps work. You don't have any control of that, but you do have control as to what meaning you assign to something that happens. Same experience can create two completely different results. For example, a guy shows up, he connects with you, he promises something more, and then he ghosts you. You can take that as you can create the meaning that you are not beautiful enough or intelligent enough or thin enough and that's why he chose to not connect with you, like something's wrong with you, or you can choose to see that that might be a guy who is not optimal in any way for your future and that he's actually helping you by disappearing and by moving away from the pool of men that you can connect with. Now, same experience, completely different meaning. You assign the meaning even though if it's challenging. Number three is it takes more courage to be optimistic than to be a cynic. As a matter of fact, it takes zero courage to be a cynic. If you are someone who is at any level saying to yourself, things won't change, all men are and blank and that blank is something not positive and the way of the, the world is rigged against me. If you have any level, even if it seems funny right now, any level of thought right now that, I mean, why even bother? It really takes no courage to do that, but if you want to step into setting great boundaries, you have to have a level of optimism. Why? Because you have to have the ability to see things the way they are, to see things the way you want them to be, and there might be a big gap between them, and then to do what's necessary to make the future that you want the way you see it. The fourth one is that your light and your courage defined your abundance with men. Here's what I mean. It's not your age, it's not your height, it's not your weight, it's not your intelligence, it's the level of 
expressiveness and light that you can muster and express and your level of courage in doing what's necessary, in being in the right environment, in setting the right boundary, those are the things that will by far be the defining factor in the number of amazing men you can connect with. So even if you've never seen those guys around, if you change something, if you change your approach, if you change your courage, and by courage I mean you go to different places that you haven't gone to before, if you create more openings, if you're someone who can now show up differently, if you can show with more worth and you can ask guys to do things in a, in a way that feels good to you, not just what feels good to them, then any one of those things can land you a completely new reality. All those things can exponentially accelerate the speed at which you can enter a new relationship. Now, before I share the specific boundaries I'm inviting you to extend to men, if you want to go further than this video and you want to understand how to create a strategy that puts you in contact with more men of the kind you're looking for, then go to the first link on the description of this video. You will see a page that looks like this. Enter your name and email and you can start watching that free training right away. The way I'm inviting you to set a boundary is with both kindness and firmness. And an analogy that will serve you to set a boundary is imagine that a guy is showing up with grape ice cream, which you do not like, and you like chocolate ice cream. You have two options. You can say, well, I'll take the grape ice cream even though I do not like it, or I will take ice cream if it's chocolate. And then he has an option. He can go to the store, get a different one, or he can say, no, grape is all I have. Now, the reason why I'm sharing this analogy is because you wouldn't think the guy is wrong because he wants to, he can only offer grape ice cream you can with kindness move on and say it's not for me. And boundary is not an imposition, it's an invitation. And the beautiful thing about a boundary is that it will allow the guy to do one of two things, but not the sideways things he might be doing right now. One is step up and meet your needs in a more powerful way. Two, step down and say, I can't do this. But he won't continue engaging in a way that feels disrespectful or that feels not cool for you, or that feels creepy or that feels like not the thing to do consistently. Boundary number one you need to invite men to step into is the boundary of shared vision. The boundary of shared vision means you will not invest time in men if you do not know what vision they have for a relationship. And the reason for that is if you engage with men and you have, especially if you develop a level of attachment and if you develop a level of chemistry and you don't know what they're looking for, then you are going to suffer. So the boundary is something like before you go on a date with them, before you start heavily connecting with them, even via messaging, you need to find out what he's looking for. And if he has the ability to share with you what he's looking for, one, and two, if that thing he's looking for is similar to what you're looking for, then you can proceed and go on a date, connect, and do all those things. If he doesn't want to share that with you, if he thinks you're pressuring him by asking him that question, then the boundary is, I accept that you can't share this with me, I'm going to remove myself from this equation, and I'm not going to date you. Period. The end. <laughs> Second boundary is the boundary of pursuit. Now, this is somewhat controversial for some people, but it's more simple than you think. And there's going to be, typically, in most relationships these days, one human being in the relationship that's doing the pursuit and one that's being pursued. That's just how, how things work for the most part. Now, you can consciously choose to be the pursuer, and if you want to do that, all the power to you. If you don't want to be the pursuer, then you need to have a boundary that says, I won't invest time in men who are not doing some pursuit. And by that, I mean, if the guy is not asking you on dates, if the guy is waiting for you to take the lead, if the guy is wanting for you to ask him out, and that doesn't feel good to you, then the boundary you can set is the invitation, saying, hey, I really enjoy in the dating process when a guy takes the lead and initiates and the guy pursues. You're not asking him to chase you, you're not asking him to, you're not playing hard to get. You're basically saying, if you want to date me, here's my preference. And again, he can step into it, he can accept it and say, now I have the keys to the kingdom. If I want to pursue you and want to eventually be in a relationship with you, I'm going to take on the lead and pursue. Or he can say, you know what? It's not for me. I prefer when women pursue me, ask me on dates, text me and, and, fee, and initiate. And, and if that's the case, then it may not be the best fit for you. Number three, the boundary of sexual engagement. And the boundary is something like this. 
I don't I suggest that you don't have sex with men until you know them, have a level of friendship with them, are in an exclusive relationship with them, and there's an emotional connection taking place that will make it far less likely that he will connect with you and then leave without feeling any level of heartbreak by doing so. And that simply means that uh, there's going to be guys who connect with you who want to have sex way earlier than you are either ready for or that would be beneficial for you. And the boundary would simply be something where you ask the guy to, if he wants to eventually have sex with you, that here's what you need. You need to have a level of friendship with him. You need to know him <laughs> better than you do right now. You be, need to be in an exclusive relationship. And that takes some time. And the guy has two options. The guy can say, I am willing to invest in this process to figure out if we can go more steady and then eventually have this level of high connection with you. Or uh, if I don't test the water, so to speak, early on, I'm not willing to invest. In which case, my suggestion is for you to move on. Why? Because there's plenty of men who, even though they don't love it, will wait to have sex with you. Here's the thing I'd love for you to learn. If a guy is saying, eventually, I want to spend the rest of my life with you, it's an incredibly high commitment, but I'm not willing to wait a few months before I have sex with you, there's a mismatch in those two visions. And I ask you to, to step into higher level of safety for you as you connect with someone. Uh, fourth one is the boundary of delayed exclusivity. And that means that guys will connect with you and sometimes will want to get off the apps and want to be your not boyfriend boyfriend, meaning uh, we're not boyfriend girlfriend, but <laughs> uh, we're just dating each other. Or worse, we're boyfriend girlfriend and we have no idea who we are, which is a high risk even. So my recommendation for you is that you set that boundary early on that you are incredibly interested to connect with someone if the guy is understanding that you're not exclusive with him and that it's going to take some time before you become exclusive with that person. That means you can date more men. That means that you can connect with more human beings. That means you can make real choices on the ground with who's showing up instead of connecting with someone, figuring out after only connecting with that person that it didn't work out, having to start from scratch all over again. That will delay your process indefinitely and I don't suggest doing it. Hope these four boundaries are helpful and useful. If you want to learn how you can go beyond these boundaries and attract better men, uh, then go to the first link in the description of this video and get on my free training. If you enjoy this video, click like or thumbs up. And last but not least, if you want my hand holding and help to help you get this in a fraction of the time, then second link will allow you to apply to work with me. Thank you so much for showing up. Thanks so much for allowing me into your phone, into your heart, into your home. And as always, I challenge you to live a full and a conscious life. <laughs>